ask yourself, have I just been wanting these because wants are here in the consciousness? Expectation is in here. And you can want things, you can see them, and you can have them in your consciousness. If you don't plan them in here, you're not going to get them. And I want you to take some time and really think about that. And don't just pass this lesson over and, and go on and do whatever you're going to do. This is the lesson. It's important that you get them. This is how you get yourself involved, you develop the understanding, it motivates the action which changes the results. And that's what we said, it's the understanding and application. On page 34, quote at the top of the page, I believe John did that much better than I could do it here with young Mark over here. So desire is the effort of the unexpressed possibility within seeking expression without through your action. It's the idea that's cooking in every cell of our being. It's the act that's bubbling under. There's something inside wanting us to go out and do. It's the idea wanting to be expressed. And don't be disheartened if it doesn't happen when you think it's supposed to happen. John mentioned yesterday there's a season for sowing and there's a season for reaping, but you never do both in the same season. When you plant the seed, understand that the idea is a non-physical seed, but it's every bit the same as a physical seed that you plant in the ground. Recently we were having some work done around our house. There was a strip that we had filled in. It was a bit of a ditch. We had it filled in and we were going to have it sodded. And uh, the gentleman that was working on it, he said, you know, he said, this is an excellent time of year to seed. He said it would come through in a week. I said, really? He said, it'd be a lot less work and an awful lot less expensive. I said, go ahead and seed it. And in a week, bang, that grass was out there. It took a week for that seed. That's called the gestation or an incubation period, and that's governed by one of the natural laws of the universe called the law of gender. All seeds have a gestation or an incubation period. I believe the seed for a baby is about 280 days. I have never seen a man coming home after a young lady's gone to the doctor and she come home and she says, darling, blessed event's going to take place. 90 days later, he comes home and he says, well, where is it? <laughs> oh, I didn't go to work. No. It's like James Allen said, we wait as one who understands. When spirit rises and commands, God is ready to obey. There's a gestation period. You plant a seed for care. I understand it takes 70 days. We have gained a conscious understanding of what the gestation period is for almost all physical seeds. But remember yesterday we were talking about the water and the steam and the ether, and we were talking about the only difference between the physical and the non-physical is in density or amplitude of vibration. It's exactly the same. Well, keep in mind that an idea is exactly the same as the physical seed. It's exactly the same. It only appears different to one of these things we call our sensory factor. But it's exactly the same, and it's governed by exactly the same law. The non-physical world and the physical world is all governed by the same law because it's the same world. It's the opposite side of the same thing. But you cannot see that with your sensory factors. You've got to see it with an inner eye of understanding. On page 34, we say, in other words, your idea, your dream or goal can only be desire once it has been properly planted in this creative universal intelligence and we suggested how you do that you do that through constant spaced repetition and you do it in a totally relaxed state i don't think you write very good music scott when you're up tight and things are bothering you and you got real pressing problems you see tension tires relaxation rests and renews relaxation opens the chakras and lets the power flow freely through you and that's really what you are as a channel Use your relaxation, your visualization tape. You say, however, once your desire has been firmly established, it is the expectant attitude that ensures your goal or dream is not uprooted or replaced by any opposing idea. You see, when you understand how this power works and your conscious relationship to it, 
You're not going to be knocked off track by circumstance because you are expecting the right thing to happen. Like Paul Hutze said, he said, I found the 10-acre lot because I was looking for the 10-acre lot. Most people don't expect it. They just think because they've changed vocations, they've changed towns, they've changed spouses, they've changed clothes, they've changed cars, that everything's going to happen. Uh-uh. You don't change the kitchen by painting the outside of the house. If you want your results to change permanently and dramatically, you've got to change them inside. Now we're on page 34. Therefore, it is imperative that you understand the following three points from Genevieve Brevan's phenomenal book, Your Invisible Power. John was working with earlier. For they will help you to develop the understanding you need to form the expectant attitude. Now, let's take a look at these three points. All space is filled with a creative power. It's not just insides, like we said earlier, it's everywhere. This creative power is amenable to suggestion. You create the idea, and as you get emotionally involved in it, you've placed it in the universe, and the entire universe comes to your beck and call. Such a phenomenal idea for us to grasp. We say the creative power only works by deductive methods. John covered that early yesterday. What do we mean by that? Deductive methods. It only has the ability to accept the idea and move it into all its necessary parts for the manifestation of the idea. It has no ability to add one fact, one idea, one thought. It cannot add anything to it. It's like a mold. What you pour in, that's what you get back. This creative power only works by deductive methods. You build the picture. I'm telling you, just think about it. You can build a picture in your mind. You turn it over, and that's the way your life starts to go. The same way the architect designs the building, the same way you design how your table is going to be set, the same way you design how to make that dress, the same way you design how to make that table, the same way Paul designed the way he wanted his house, you can design your life. All aspects of it. And it works by exactly the same law. Now Thomas Troward in his writing emphasized this last point because it implies that the action of this ever-present creative power is in no way limited by precedent or what has gone on before. What do we mean by that? Well, I'll tell you exactly what we mean by it. Your present or past results have absolutely nothing to do with what's going to happen from this point forward. Now, that was the point that Ray Stanford drilled into my head. You see, I kept thinking, well, gee, I'm such a mess up. You know, I've done everything wrong up till now. I'm 26. I'm broke. I'm not happy. Everything was wrong. He said, Bob, that's all in the past. He said, every moment is a new moment. We shouldn't condemn ourselves. And he said, what you were yesterday, you paid for. What you are today, you decide upon. That's exactly what Troward's saying. This power in no way is limited by precedent. Even in a creative state, we sometimes don't understand that. Do you know why airplanes, right up to today almost, have wings on them? Because birds have wings. Birds fly. They have wings. If you're going to get a plane to fly, you've got to put wings on it. Do you? No. We've got planes flying without wings today. You know why? Never did need wings. But you see, the thinking was, to a degree, limited by precedent. Birds fly with wings. Planes have to have wings. Planes do not have to have wings. You're creative. If you can visualize it, you can do it. It doesn't matter what it is. That's what Hill said. Anything in mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Said in other words, this universal creative power creates a creative direction from the idea or image that you impress upon it. It's just sitting there and it's waiting and saying, whatever you ask for, I'll give you. Before you speak, I'll hear. Now, is that just a nice little piece of scripture? Before you speak, I'll hear. Well, let's analyze it from a logical point of view. What precedes the spoken word, the thought? What's the thought set up? It sets up the vibration. What is this work by? By vibration, movement. 
See, one of the laws of the universe is vibration. Everything vibrates, nothing rests. Everything from the electron to the universe is in a state of movement. Before you speak, I'll hear. Sound of God evolves around the law of vibration. I don't know if the book you've got has nothing on the next page, but my page is blank. If you want to take and number the next, the next page, both sides of the next page, would you take and number that? Now, how many of you, or did you, write 35 and 36 on the next two pages? Why? Why'd you do that? Do you want to know why you did it? Because it seemed the most natural thing in the world to do. Because there was nothing on it. On one side it says 34, and the next one said 37. So this has to be 35 and 36. You could have put 16 and 102 if you wanted. There was nothing on the page. Nothing. And you know that's exactly the way your life is every day? Blank. Nothing there. Put on it anything you want. You don't have to let what's on the previous page determine. You don't have to let what somebody tells you is coming determine. You can put anything on it you want. You've got a clear sheet. You have right now, Mark has, I have, John has. Every one of us has. Now, grasp that. We can start over right now, build the image. You see, L did that. He said, I'm not going to work for $18,000 anymore. I am not going to be average anymore. I understand when he went through the seminar, he started to grasp this. He said, I understand there's something special about me. He said, I'm going to treat me the way God meant me to treat me. Did his wife benefit? I guess she did. Did his daughter benefit? I guess she did. Did his manager benefit? I guess he did. And you want to know who else benefited? A whole pile of people that he helped move into the home of their dream. Did he provide service? Yeah, he did. Did he sacrifice? Sure. He was out lots of evenings when he could have been home. Think about it. Think about it. Up at the top of page 37, we say, once you fully understand this great truth, the character with which this sensitive reproductive power is invested will become the most important consideration for you. Your thoughts, you will start to guard them. You'll start to monitor them. You're going to start to really pay close attention to what's going on. See, once you become aware of this truth that the universal creative power can only be what you feel and think it to be, it will become eager and willing to do your bidding. You say this understanding will enable you to be filled with the expectant attitude and to expect the materialization of the image will become most natural for you. Do you know that if you put this particular tape on and play it every day for at least a month, there's so much depth to this idea. Every time you read it, you're going to see it clearer. It'll be as if you're standing at the base of a tall building facing east. And somebody said, what's the view like facing east? And you'll describe it. But then you go in and you raise your consciousness, you move up to the third floor and you go to the east wall and you look through the window. The view is different. You're still facing east, but it's different. And then you go and you raise your consciousness and you go up to the tenth floor and you go to the east wall and you look, but it's different. It's much more beautiful. And ultimately, if you'll keep listening to this and watching it and thinking it and relating it to your own life, you're going to work your way to the roof. And you'll see as far as your eyes can take you. It's like Paul told me one time. He said, go as far as you can see. When you get there, you'll see how to go further. Troward said, if you think your thought's powerful, it's powerful. Let's stroke from our vocabulary those three words, it's just me. It's just me. It's just me should never be just. Something absolutely phenomenal. When you're talking about you, you could speak in superlatives all day long and you're going to fall short of describing the dynamics of you. Talk about something special. You are sure special, believe me. I know I'm special. I think I'm a nice person. And you know something? It's because I know that and think that that I attract nice people into my life. I've got some phenomenal friends. 
Later today, you're going to see everybody that works for our company, and I'm going to tell you, I was saying to Paul last night, I'm so proud to be working with these people. We have some of the nicest people that you'll ever want to meet working in this company. Just absolutely phenomenal. We were talking about Shirley Laverdier, our national sales manager. And I was saying last night at dinner, I said, you know something? I have never heard that woman complain. I've never heard her say anything negative. Physically, she's not very big, but I'm going to tell you, she's got a rod of steel right down her back. She's the toughest little lady I've ever met in my life, and smart. I was saying to Paul, we were with Gina and Randy, and I said, you know something? I said, they work at this company as if it's theirs. On the way home, I thought, maybe they got a picture in their mind. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> but you don't attract people like this if you're not a nice person. You see, I grew up with the idea, don't say things about yourself like that. It's conceit. It is not. It's awareness. If you don't love you, how are you ever going to love anyone else? I'm not talking about conceit. I'm talking about a heightened awareness of what we're really like. Now, expressed another way, as a person thinketh in their heart, so are they. John worked on that yesterday just about as well as I've ever heard it worked on. It's in your heart. That's inside. That's what Paul was talking about. Universal creative power can no more change this law than an ordinary mirror can reflect back to you a different image than the object that you hold before it. But remember, as you think does not mean as you tell people you think. Well, there's a lot of people got that mixed up. It doesn't mean as you tell people you think or as you would wish the world to believe you think. It means your innermost thoughts, what's going on inside. What do you think of you? The more you study you, the, you're going to find your belief system is based upon your evaluation of something. The more you evaluate you, the more you're going to believe in you. It means your innermost thoughts, that's the place where no one but you knows the truth, your sanctum sanctorum. That's where you go to the closet and you close the door inside. That is what you expect, and that is what you will attract, and that is what you will ultimately get. All things are possible in spirit because it's an original state. Spirit is a sensitive, unseen, creative substance whose sole purpose is expansion and fuller expression. But spirit or creative substance can only reproduce, expand, or express itself in a greater way in accordance with the limitations placed upon the instrument through which it expresses itself. It's like the light bulb. What did John say to you a few minutes ago? Some of you recorded it mentally, and some of you might not have. He said, don't expect God to do for you what God can only do with and through you. Powerful line. How did he get that so deeply sunk? Because he sat where we you're sitting and he wrote it over and over and over and thought about it over and over and over and worked with it over and over and over. It doesn't just, you know, it's the way it works. The non-physical creative substance spirit flows to and through the seed and expresses itself in its polar opposite physical form, namely the plant or the tree. Now, I want to take a minute. We are running a little late. but Take a look at the third paragraph on the bottom of page 37. Spirit can only express itself through the medium of an acorn in accordance with the limitations placed on the acorn. And the medium of the acorn is limited by the pattern plan or the nucleus in the seed. Now, I want you to really think. I want you to imagine that that's an acorn. That acorn is not solid. It is moving. It is actually moving. That acorn is a mass of energy in a high speed of vibration. And at the present time, that acorn would be disintegrating because it can only do one of two things, create or disintegrate. It's disintegrating because it's not in an environment that's conducive to its unfoldment. Why do you think I suggested to Brian to get in with the big hitters? Dr. Livingston proved that from Harvard back away back in the 60s. He took a person that wasn't doing well and he placed that person, pe person with people that were doing very well and that person's productivity went up. Get into the right environment. That acorn, if we took the acorn and we planted it, let's say that's the acorn. 
and we plant the acorn below the earth's surface. Instantly and automatically, that acorn would start to attract particles of energy to it. If I took two drops of water and I moved them together, what would happen? They'd become one. If I took a drop of peanut oil and a drop of water and moved it together, what would happen? They'd repel. Why? Because they're not on the same frequency. They're both massive energy, but not in harmonious vibration. There's all kinds of particles of energy in the earth that are not in harmony with the vibratory rate of the acorn, but they won't be attracted because they're not on the same frequency. Now that acorn has a pattern plan or a nucleus in it. You'll hear many people say the oak sleeps in the acorn. That's not true. You'll never find an oak tree in an acorn. You can dissect it with the most powerful microscope you'll ever get your hands on. You'll never find an oak tree in it. Do you know why? There isn't one there. The oak tree's in the universe. Where does everything come from? Everything just is. Everything is an expression of the same thing. Everything, all supply, comes from one infinite source, a non-physical source. Same as your money, your health, and everything else. This acorn has no ability to alter its state of vibration, so it keeps attracting little particles of energy, just like a magnet. And as they join with the acorn, it's like the drop of water. Keep adding drops to it, and pretty soon you're going to have a big puddle. This thing has to what? Expand. We call that growth. And a shoot comes out of the bottom, and another little shoot comes out of the bottom. Pretty soon a shoot comes out of the top, and it bursts through the earth into the atmosphere, and from the atmosphere, particles of energy, unseen to the physical senses, but not unseen to this power, and it's attracted, and that thing starts to grow, and pretty soon it has roots, and it has a trunk, and bark, and branches, and twigs, and leaves, and it has the whole thing. Do you know why? It cannot change its state of vibration. It's locked in. That's why an acorn can only grow into an oak tree. Carrot can seed can only grow into a carrot. I know what makes us unique. We can grow into anything we choose because we build the idea, it becomes the nucleus, it controls our vibration, and that dictates what we attract to us. You know what our problem is? We're growing into an oak tree one day, a carrot the next, a maple tree the following day. And you know why we do that? Because we don't see what we think with our limited awareness is coming to us on time. We want the leaves before we even get the roots. Won't work. Never has, never will. Get locked into your idea and stay in that vibration regardless of what's happening. I've often said you'd have to put a great big bullet right through here to get me to stop doing what I'm doing. I don't want to do anything else. I made it my, long, my mind a long time ago. This is what I was going to do and I was going to work at getting better at it every day. Lock into something. Find something you love to do and dedicate your life to it. I see people come into this business and because they haven't made it in three weeks, they say, oh, hell, it won't work. <laughs> you know? I mean, it won't work. Anything will work. They do it like they play a yo-yo. It's up and down, up and down. I'll throw the yo-yo away. You know? Never master it. Do you know the average person reads at a grade 7 level? We learn to read by the time we're in grade 7 and never improve upon the skill. Very few people ever master anything. I want to suggest that through the repetition of listening and looking and watching this, you're going to master whatever you love to do. Go and do it. Get the courage to step out and do it. On page 38, Genevieve B. Rand said, when your understanding, when your understanding, understanding comes from knowledge, it's the polar opposite of ignorance. When your understanding, and remember knowledge, the only way you can get it at is through study. Unfortunately, study seems to be something like taxes. People only do it if they have to. Well, what we want to do is fall in love with the idea of studying. When your understanding grasps the power to visualize your heart's desire, the heart is the spiritual core of your being. And you know something? Spirit's always for expression and fuller expansion. Spirit's always for growth, never for disintegration. When you see things get bad and they say it must be God's will, that's an expression of ignorance. God's will is always for expansion and fuller expression. Greater ways, greater things. That is God's will for you, for me, for everyone else. Never for hard times. Abundance is our birthright. We've been conned, folks. 
She said, when your understanding grasps the power to visualize your heart's desire and then hold it with your will, don't let some peon suggestion knock the idea out of your mind that you can't do it because you never have up till now. Hold the idea with your will, concentrate. Do like Napoleon, he said, I see only the objective, the obstacle must give way. Do like he did, but don't be like he was. He wasn't a nice person. <laughs> she said, when you do that, it will attract to you all things requisite to the fulfillment of that picture, and it'll attract it by the harmonious vibration, the law of attraction. You know what you have to do? If nothing's created or destroyed, you've got to get on the same frequency as the good that you desire is on. There's music in this room right now. You don't hear it, but it's here. If I brought in a little transistorized radio and turned it on, you'd hear the music. Did I invite the music in, or did I tune into something that was already here? And all I have to do is change the dial and I get different music, and change it again and I get different music. And what am I doing? I'm tuning in on different frequencies. And as you get the image and get involved, you alter the frequency you're on. Therefore, you attract whatever's on that frequency. If you want poverty? Tune into it. Be delivered right on schedule. Me, I've never liked poverty. Never. Even when I lived in it. <laughs> now, the rest of page 38 is pretty, well, self-explanatory. You fill it in. But make sure you fill it in. On page 39, there are three lessons here, or three concepts. It'll take in whatever John's explained and what I've explained. Three certain steps for prosperity in all areas of your life. On page 39. Number one, build the image. That's plugging in the bigger bulb so that you can illuminate your life in a greater way. Turn it over to spirit. Turn it over to spirit. Let go and let John. Let go and let God. I was thinking of John as I was saying that, <laughs> but for good reason. So we didn't edit it. It's for your benefit, too. You know, when John and Pat Swanton talked to me about that house on Seven Bards Walkway that I made reference to yesterday, that Vera Blatt and Brian and Leslie now live in, they came to me after they put a deposit on that, and they were worried because they didn't have the money. They couldn't even see where it was coming from. And I used that quote of Genevieve B. Rand's. I said, believe it's coming and it'll come. Just let go and let God. And it was a very, very funny feeling the day they moved into that house. Because I was there and they moved into the day, 18th of December. The only thing that was in that house that was movable was the stove and the fridge. And on the refrigerator were a pair of praying hands, magnetic ones, that said, let go and let God. God's everywhere, he's everything, we'll work through you, we'll give you whatever you want, but you've got to ask for it, and you ask in the